we'll be discussing priorities in life. It's a very important issue. A person speaks, thinks about what are his priorities in life. <coughs> I'd like to discuss a Gemara in Baba Basra. It gives us a little insight to this Indian of priorities. The Gemara says, Om Rabbi Yechanan, Chamesh Averis Ovar Oise Rosha Ba'Oise Yehim. The Gemara is discussing Esav Arosha. Esav Arosha, on the day that he came back and he sold his Bechayra to Yaakov, so the Gemara says that he was over on five Averis. What were these five Averis? The first one the Gemara mentions was Baal Naim He lived with a young girl who just got married. The second one is Haragas and Nefesh. He murdered. The third one is Kafar Be'iker. He did not believe in Abba He denied Hashgoch Protis. The fourth one is Kafar Be'ikir Mason. He denied that it's Chiyas HaMesim. And the fifth one is Shot as a Bechayra. He was Mivaze the Bechayra. And Rashi explains what is Shot as a Bechayra. Says Rashi, Ubiza as a Avoida Shehoisa Bechayras. He degraded, he lacked the respect for Avoida's Karbanas. Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz, Zechat Tzadik Tevrocha, asks the question. The first four Averis that we find that Esau was over were seemingly terrible Averis. Terrible Averis. These are the Averis of Yarek Bal Yavar. Baal Amorosa, Gideh Arayas. Not only Gideh Arayas, it's Narimorosa, a young girl who just got married. It's Narimorosa, Skila. It's a terrible Avera. Just got married, a young girl, to commit adultery. The next one, Horag has an a murder. He murdered. Ace was a murderer. Then, Kofa Be'iker. He didn't believe in a Kaddish Baruch He didn't believe in the, in the 13 concepts of Emunah. He didn't believe in a Kaddish Baruch person who grew up in Avram Avinu's house, Yitzchak Avinu's house, well, they saw Malachim, they saw such Nisim, and they didn't believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a terrible Avera. But the last one, Shot as a Bechayra, how can you compare them? How can you compare this Avera to the other Averas? And similarly, Rabbi Kotler Zechrenei, Yogen Aleinu, he is the Kasha even more. All these Averis that are mentioned are not mentioned before in the Torah. The Torah just brings them Beremes. In fact, it calls Minas Sode is Narmarosa, Oyev is murder, Lomoze is Zekeli Van Veyu. In the Anechil Oilach Lamos is Tchias Hamesim, but the only one that the Torah specifically emphasizes is Vayivez Esav as a Why? What is so important about this? Why is this? Why are these compared? And why does the Torah emphasize this? So, I'll answer this question with a story. A I don't know if it happened. I don't know if it could have happened. Probably it could have happened. They say, well, all Chassidish Amaisas, if you don't believe in them, that they couldn't have happened, maybe you're Apicarius, if you believe that all of them happened, maybe you're a fool. But it's a Chassidish Amaisa, and if, it's not, if, it didn't, it's not, if it never happened, at least it's a good moshal. It teaches us a message. There was one Chassid, who came to the Rebbe and told the Rebbe 
I'm marrying off my daughter, and unfortunately, I don't have enough money to marry off my daughter. What should I do? Came to the Rebbe. She's of age, she has to get married, and we can't afford it. So the Rebbe told him, here, I'm giving you this ruble, take this ruble, and the first opportunity that you have for a business deal, I want you to use this ruble, and Be'ezah Hashem, with this ruble, you'll have siyata dushmaya to make a business deal that will pay for your chasm. So, a good chosid, he believed in his rebbe, he took the ruble, and he went out. It was late at night, was he going to find someone to do a business deal? Came to some tavern, and there were a bunch of, of Yidin uh, drinking in the tavern, and he came into the tavern and he gave him the ruble and he told them, told these not not so religious Yidin, Yidin, he told them, I need to make a business deal. Maybe someone has a business deal for me. I have a ruble for my Rebbe, and my Rebbe said if I make this business deal, I'll have Siyad Deshmaya. So they they started thinking. What, could they, what, what business deal could they make for one ruble? What can they do? Oh, so one person had an idea. I have an idea. I'll make you a great business deal. I'll take this ruble and I'll sell you all my other mabba. All my other mabba. You can have all my other mabba for your ruble. And all the, all the bunch of hooligans started laughing. What's he said? What's my Elam Haba worth? A ruble, maybe one ruble. Maybe I once did a chesed. One ruble, I'll sell it. So they, they take, they wrote out a contract, and they made a contract that <coughs> all his Elam Haba, let's say Yankel's Elam Haba, was sold to Beryl, the chesed. Yankel sold all his Elam Haba to Beryl. They had two witnesses, they signed a complete contract, no Elam Haba. And Yankel was happy. He thought he made a fool and a barrel. And barrel was happy. He listened to his Rebbe. And everything's fine and dandy. Until Yankel went home. Yankel went home. And he came. Told, told, his, told his wife, I have a great story. You know what happened to me today? I was in the tavern. He came a Chesidosh guy. And I took. And I sold. I bought, bought, sold my Elam Haba, all my Elam Haba for one ruble. He said, I got the ruble. What's my Elam Haba worth? His wife said, <gasps> she became white. She said, you sold all your Elam Haba. She said to him, I can't live with a person who doesn't have Elam Haba. I want you to go right now back to, to Beryl and buy back your Elam Haba. He said, what do you care about? No, she said, no, I'm not willing to live with you. I'm going to get divorced. You don't buy back your Elam Haba. He went back and went to Beryl. Listen, Beryl, it was a mistake when I sold my Elam Haba. I need to buy it back. Beryl said, I'm sorry. The Rebbe told me to do this business deal. I'll have Siyad Dishmai with this business deal. I can't sell it back, you don't have it. So he said, but, but uh, Shalom Bayes, what's going to be? She said, the only way I'll sell it back to you if my Rebbe tells to sell it back to you. So he says, who's your Rebbe? So he told him who his Rebbe is. So Yankel goes to the Rebbe and tells the Rebbe, look what happened. Tells him the whole story. He came with this ruble that you sent him for, to do a business deal. And I sold my Elam Haba. And please, it's, uh, have Rahmanis. My wife won't live with me anymore. So the Rebbe said, okay. If you give him all the amount of money he needs to marry off his daughter, I'll tell him to sell you back to him. So, uh, so $25,000, $30,000, $50,000, whatever, whatever Beryl needs. So, Yankel asked the Rebbe, 
It's not fair. It's not fair what you're telling me. How much is my Olam Haba worth? Is my Olam Haba worth? A ruble? Was it worth $50,000? If it's worth a ruble, then how could you charge me now $50,000 for Olam Haba? If it's worth Fifty thousand dollars. Then my sale in the beginning wasn't a good sale. It was like, no, it's fooled. I was tricked. I sold it for a ruble. Said the Rebbe, the value of the oil Mahabha is how much you value it. If you value the oil Mahabha for as a, the value of a ruble, that's how much your oil Mahabha is worth. You valued the oil Mahabha as a ruble, so that's how much it's worth. That's a good sale. Beryl valued Elam Abba for $50,000. So that's how much it's worth. Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz, Zech HaSadik Levrocha, says a similar concept. He has a kasha, a more longish kasha. His kasha is, how could the mechira of the mechira, how could it be chal? It's like, no. It's like, no, Yosem Mishtus. If you sell something that's worth a tremendous amount of money for very little money, and the, the Moicha did not realize how much it's worth. So, Mechir is not So, how could Yaakov buy it for such a small amount? Says so, Rabchaim Shmulev is the same you saw it as that Rebbe. That since Asa valued the Lechem and the Zid Adoshim more or equal to the Chayra, to Mitzvahs. So that's how much the value was. Says Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz from here, a Yisoyed Gadol, an important concept, that the person's Mitzvahs are how much. He gives them priority. How much he values them, that's how much they're worth. And if a person gives up for mitzvahs, a small amount, then he gives up, is willing to forego mitzvahs for a small amount, then his mitzvahs are not worth that much. And therefore, the answer, how we compare this, how can we compare all these mitzvahs, all these averis that Asaph did, how can we compare them? The answer is, the avera of Bizeya B'chayra was not one specific avera of Bizeya B'chayra. This was a def- definition of all, all of Esau's mitzvahs. All of Esau's mitzvahs is not worth anything anymore. If he's willing to give up mitzvahs for Lechem and Zid Adoshim, so he destroyed all of his mitzvahs. And this is a concept that we have to look at. In all our mitzvahs that we do, how much importance do we give them? How much are they a priority in our lives? That is the most important thing. Because if they, we give them priority, we change all the mitzvahs. We have the mitzvahs that are now worth much more. And if chas v'shalom, we're willing to give up mitzvahs for a small amount of money, for a small tithes, for different things, then our mitzvahs are not worth that much. And that destroys all our mitzvahs. Therefore, the avoid of a person is not just to do mitzvahs, it's to give respect to the mitzvahs. How much destruction has come to the world because of Ayyivez Esav as a Bechaira? That he lost the Bechaira? How much murder has come since? How much blood has been spilled 
Because by Yiv is Esav is a Bechayra. How much would Esav rather it said in the Torah, by Yichabed Esav is a Bechayra? How much would we rather when the Torah writes about us, about our lives, that it should say, Vayivez Yaakov Esa Bechayra, Chas V'Sholom. How much would we rather say, Vayichabed Yaakov Esa Bechayra? How much would we care in every mitzvah that we do? How much respect do we have? There's a famous story that Chaim from Levis used to say over. That in the Chassam Sofer's yeshiva, there were two boys who came to be accepted to the yeshiva. And one didn't do as well on the Faher as the other. And the Chassam Sofer accepted the boy who didn't that didn't do as well as the other boy. And the Rebbeim the Yeshiva asked him, why didn't you accept the boy who did much better on the Faher? Said the Chassam Sefer, this happened before Chodesh Cheshvan. It was right after Sukkot. And when he was coming in to the Yeshiva, I was looking out the window. And I saw him stepping on the Schach. Sam Sefer said, if a person does not have respect for the schach, right after Sukkot, then he will not be Masrech and Yeshiva. means even if he learns well, but he doesn't respect the mitzvahs. Our avoida is not only to do mitzvahs, but to give respect to mitzvahs, to give priority for mitzvahs. And with that, Hashem will write on us, Vayichabed Klal Yisrael, as a Bechayra, and we say to be Ezer Hashem to rectify all our Avedis Hashem and bring it to its shlemus.